Hello again. We're just going to take one last look at discretization in this lesson, 2.3. We're going to look at how J48 does discretization because it does deal with numeric attributes. So somehow inside of J48, it's got to effectively discretize an attribute, or at least it's got to be able to determine a split point for a numeric attribute. So let's just review how uh, J48 works. It's a top-down recursive divide and conquer algorithm, and we talked about this in the last class. Data mining with Weka. The algorithm involves, first of all, selecting an attribute to split on at the root node. That's the Outlook attribute in this case. Creating a branch for every possible value of that attribute, sunny, overcast, and rainy. Splitting the instances into subsets that go down those three branches, one for each branch and repeating recursively for each branch, selecting an attribute, and so on, using only instances that reach the branch. So the key questions are, what's the best attribute to split on, and when should you stop the process? And the answer to the first question is the attribute with the greatest information gain. At least that's J48's uh, answer. Information gain is the amount of information that's gained by knowing the value of the attribute, which is the entropy of the distribution before the split minus the entropy of the distribution after it. And entropy is defined in terms of p log p. So we talked about that briefly uh, in the previous uh, course. The details um, we didn't really go into, and I don't think they're too important for you at this point. So here, in the previous example, the weather data, the information gain for Outlook was 0.247 bits, according to that calculation, and that was the greatest information gain of all of the attributes, and so that's the one that was split on. That's how it works. So now let's look at a numeric attribute. This is the temperature attribute in the numeric weather data, and here the split point is a number. And the trouble is, there's an infinite number of numbers, so we can't possibly try them all. However, uh, the split points, we're going to choose split points midway between adjacent values in the training set. So this reduces it to a finite problem, n minus 1 possibilities. So here, for the temperature attribute, it goes from 64 at the bottom end to 85 at the top end. Those are the class values of the instances. So uh, when uh, the value of temperature was 64, it was a yes instance. And there were two instances where the value was 72, one no and one yes instance. And they're just n minus 1 possibilities, and we're going to try them all, try all possible boundaries. So if we take that split point that's shown, on the left side of the split point, we've got four yeses and one no, and on the right side, we've got five yeses and four no's. And we can calculate the entropy before the split and the entropy after the split and subtract them, and the information gain in this case is 0.001 bits. So we might choose that if that's the greatest information gain of all of the possible split points. That's how it's going to work for numeric attributes. So here's an example. We've already split, let's say, on Outlook, chosen that at the root. And if we look at the sunny branch, then there are five instances whose Outlook is sunny. And those are in that little table there. And if you look at the value of humidity, it's uh, 70 and 70 for the two yes instances, and 85, 90, and 95 for three no instances. So it neatly splits the instances into yeses and nos if we choose a split point somewhere between 70 and 85. And we're going to choose it halfway at the point 75. Well, 75 isn't halfway between 70 and 85, but we've got two things at 70 and one thing at 85, so we're going to use a sort of a weighted halfway point, so it's going to be sort of a third of the way from 70 to 85. That's where we get the 75 from. So that's the split point, and in this case, that's the end of the matter. We've discriminated the instances into yes and no instances down that branch. In a more complicated example, you can imagine we might split on the same attribute more than once. If we have a nominal attribute, once we split on it, once we split on Outlook here, then we've used all of the information in the Outlook attribute, and we certainly aren't going to split further down the tree on the same attribute. But that's not true for numeric attributes. We could split with a certain threshold for a numeric attribute, and further down the tree, we might uh, split again on the same attribu attribute, but with a different threshold. So let's just think about this 
issue about discretization when building a tree, as I've described, versus discretization in advance, which we looked at in the last couple of lessons. So when you do discretization when building a tree, you're determining the boundaries in a more specific context, in the kind of context of that subtree. A subset of the instances get down here, and so you've got a more specific data set to determine, maybe give you a better determination of where a discretization boundary should be. On the other side, the negative side, your decision is based on a small subset of the, of the overall information. You've always got to remember when you're working with a tree that as you get further down to the bottom of the tree, you've got smaller and smaller and smaller numbers of instances. So although you might have a large data set to begin with, by the time you get way down the tree, you're only dealing with a small number of instances, which is maybe not a good basis on which to make a decision. Another issue is computational complexity. As I've described the algorithm for every internal node, the instances that reach it must be sorted separately for each numeric attribute so that you can work out which split point on which attribute gives you the best information gain value. And the complexity of sorting is uh, n log n, where n is the number of things you're sorting. And it looks like you've got to repeatedly sort instances, which could be a, big, uh, a bit demanding computationally. But in fact, repeated sorting can be avoided with a better data structure. So it's not computationally disastrous to do internal discretization. OK, that's it. So C4.5 incorporated discretization very early on. Uh, and uh, pre-discretization, as we've seen in the last lessons, is an alternative which has been refined later. Supervised discretization uses essentially the same entropy heuristic as C4.5. And we can retain the ordering information that numeric attributes apply, imply, so we don't have to keep on sorting them as we go further down the tree. Will internal discretization in J48 outperform pre discretization? Well, there's arguments both for and against, which we've talked about, and it's an experimental question, and you will answer it in the activity associated with this lesson, and uh, not just for J48, but for other classifiers as well. So good luck with that, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.